because if i uh, start teaching each and every point then it will take one year to complete this course right and there is nothing that it is rocket science what is calking and flaring you can't understand it so we will take up this welded joint so welded joint as you know is a permanent joint which is obtained by the fusion of the edges of two parts to be joined together with or without the application of pressure and a flare material right so remember that it is a permanent joint why is a permanent joint because we have to destroy the the welding or the con connected components if we want to disassemble the joint so the heat required for the fusion of material Uh, may be obtained by burning of ga gas or by an electric arc right now welding is uh, extensively used in fabrication as an alternative method for casting and as a replacement of for bolted and riveted joints uh, we can also use it for repair right so there are uh so many advantages and disadvantages of these welded joints or riveted joints like the certain advantages are that uh welding structures are usually lighter than uh, riveted structures uh then welded joints provide maximum efficiency sometimes 100% right why because there is no uh a uh, change in the area we don't re remove the material in welding instead we add the material so we sometimes get efficiency as good as we get strength as good as that of the uh, unwelded plate right or the solid plate so we say that efficiency sometimes attained is 100% right similarly uh, other advantages we have say alterations and additions can be easily made in the existing structure uh, uh in welded connections the tension members are not weakened as in case of riveted joint right sometimes members uh, are of such a shape where we cannot uh, there is difficulty in riveting so they can be easily welded so these are the some advantages of the welded joint there are some certain little disadvantages like uh since so there is an uneven heating and cooling during fabrication therefore the members may get distorted right you require highly skilled labor and supervision for welded joint right that's not much required in riveted joint okay uh we don't keep uh, provision or uh, expansion and contraction in the frame so there or there is a possibility of developing in it right so broad broad speaking welding processes are uh, classified into two categories right so we classify weld classification remember we are not interested in this we will be interested actually in design of welded joint how to design the welded joint what you will be given we have lab joint and bud joint like we have in elevator joint you will be given load that this much load is to be carried by this joint what should be the length of the weld or say we'll say certain other things in the weld so classification broadly speaking we divide them these welding process into two categories one is welding processes that use heat alone welding processes that use heat alone that's called as fusion welding fusion welding then we have number second is welding processes that use
that you heat and pressure one is that you use heat alone we call that as fusion welding and welding process that use heat as well as pressure that is combination of heat and pressure we call this as forge welding right so to see that in case of fusion welding the part to be jointed are held in position while the molten metal is supplied to the joint now this molten metal may come from the parts themselves that is parent metal or filler metal which normally has the same couple composition as the parent metal so the this fusion welding is further classified into three categories so we'll see fusion welding one is thermite welding thermite welding now this depends upon the source of heat we divide this fusion welding into three categories so thermite welding then gas welding and number 3 is what we call as electric arc welding arc welding right so we have seen that welding processes we have divided into two categories one is fusion welding another is forge welding in fusion welding we use heat only and in forge welding we use heat as well as pressure now this fusion welding is further divided into three categories one is thermite welding gas welding and electric arc welding to see that uh, this thermite welding it is more or less casting process what you do in casting you you uh, in crucible you melt certain metal right then in the sand you have a mold and you pour that metal into that mold sand mold and you get the replica of the uh, shape you want okay so that is actually casting so this thermite welding is more or less a casting welding casting type of thing what we do in this thermal welding we have a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum that's called as thermite and this is ignited this mixture of iron oxide and thermite is ignited and this iron oxide is reduced to molten iron this uh, ignition actually there is a reaction between this iron oxide and aluminum right it is an exothermic reaction and a large amount of heat is generated now this iron oxide is reduced to molten iron the molten iron is poured into a mold made around the joint and fuses with the pot to be welded right so question is how do we ignite this thermite remember that thermit is a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum now we cannot use a spark to ignite it so what we do we use because we need high temperature to ignite it around 1200 degrees centigrade so we use a magnesium citric full jd pata hai we use full jd jo hoti hai that is a magnesium citric so we use that magnesium citric to ignite this thermite right where in reaction takes place between the between iron oxide and aluminum and this is a exothermic reaction which generates lot of heat where in iron oxide is reduced to molten iron and that is molten iron uh, is poured into the mold made around the joint and upon cooling you get the weld this is generally used for uh, joining these uh, 
rail lines. Wherever you have damage in the rail lines, you cannot get that rail line to some site. What you do, you instead uh, prepare this thermit mixture and then pour it onto the railway line and that welds that broken railway line. Okay. Then you have a gas welding. As I told you, depending upon the source of heat. In thermite welding, the source of heat is a reaction, exothermic reaction between iron oxide and aluminum. In gas welding, uh, this is made by applying the flame of an oxyacetylene or hydrogen gas. Oxyacetylene gas or hydrogen gas, we, we, we supply it from a welding torch, from a cylinder to a welding torch, right? And the intense heat And also here, that is, this is also from the below, right? This we call as transverse flood weld. If we have only one edge welding, since the plates are overlapping, if we have weld at one edge only, we call that as, uh, say, single transverse flat weld. Sometimes we call them as flat joint. Slab joint we call as flat joint. Why? Because this weld resembles the cross section resembles that of a shoulder. So that's why we call this as flat joint. Slab joint or flat joint. Then is this uh, joint or weld resembles the cross section resembles that of the shoulder. So that's why we call them as flat. Okay. Then since if it is if it is welded at one edge only, we call that as single transfer slit weld. Single transfer slit weld. If it is uh, welded at both edges, that is this edge and from the lower side edge, that will we call as double double trans or flat weld. Okay. Now we can have also like weld like this. This is that this uh Lab joint, we can have weld like this here and here, right? This will be called as parallel flat weld. Okay. So, as I told you that the lab joint or the flat joint is obtained by overlapping the plate and then welding the edges of the plate. The cross section of the flat is approximately triangular. We'll come to this, what is this triangular? The flat joint may be single transverse flat weld, double transverse flat weld, or parallel flat joint. Right, a single transverse flat joint has a disadvantage that the edges of the plate, which is not welded, can buckle. Okay, so that's why we go for welding at both edges. Then you know butt joint. In case of these butt joints, the joint is obtained by placing the plate edge to edge. Right, like say, uh, like this. Let me let me show you here. This is one plate. This is another plate. All right. And here we go for welding. Right. 
right? So this will be called as butt joint. So we have, uh, depending upon the cross section of this weld, we have scar, butt joint, single V butt joint, single U butt joint, double V butt joint, and others. So you can see that uh, there are other types of joints also, like say, we have joint like this. Okay, this is one plate, this is another plate, and we have weld like this. Right, this we call as corner joint. Or we can have plates like this. And we have wells like this. Okay. This we call as a joint. Or we can have simply like this also. Here we have one world and here we have another world. Right? This we call a T joint. Okay, now if you see that if you go to an industry, there are symbols for the welded joint, right? Uh, there are uh, uh, drawing representations and then symbols for these welded joints. Uh, what we are interested is how to design a welded joint, right? For designing a welded joint, we have to find the strength of welded joint, right? How to determine the strength of the welded joint. So first we'll take, say, a single transverse flat weld or a double transverse flat weld. We will see how to calculate its strength. Okay, if we are able to calculate the strength, we know what load is to act on the joint. Accordingly, we can find the length and other size and other things of this welding. So we need to know the trunks, how to calculate the trunks of a transverse flat welded joint. You know transverse flat welded joint, transverse means that when you have overlapping and two edges are welded, right? Then you have parallel flat welded joint. So we'll first see the transverse of transfer, uh, this trunks of transverse flat weld, and we'll see the trunks of parallel flat weld, right? So I'll write trunks or uh, was let weld joint. Right? Let me make a uh, figure for you.
So you can see this uh, single transfer slit weld, welded joint. We have this two plates which are lapping, and then we have welded only one uh, edge. So this will be a single transfer slit weld. L is length of the weld. S is what we call as size of the weld. And this size is always equal to the thickness of the weld, right? As you can see here, I have shown that the cross section is more or less like shoulder. So that's why we call this as flat weld. Now, if we uh, weld another edge also, that is lower edge, this edge also, then it will be uh, double transverse flat weld, right? Now, we have to design this. Uh, welded joint. That is, we have to, obviously, I told you that size of the weld S is equal to the thickness of the plate, right? We have to suppose find the length of the weld. How to find the length of the weld? So, in order to determine the strength of the flat weld, it is assumed that the section of flat weld is a right angled triangle abc let me make the figure again i will enlarge it we have two plates These are the two plates, which are overlapping, right? And here, for trimming the strand, we assume it is assume the section of that weld is a, a right angle triangle. Okay, right? So. This is A, A, this is B, this is C. Okay. Now, I say that it is assumed that the section of flat is a right angular triangle ABC with hypotenuse AC making equal angles with other two sides that is AB and BC, right? So this will be 45, and this is also 45, right? This is your S, that is from this point to this point. This is your S, right? This also will be S. As I told you, size of the weld is equal to the thickness of the plate. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the length of each side is known as leg or size of the weld. And the perpendicular distance of the hypotenuse from the intersection of legs is known as throat thickness. Intersection of legs means this. If you draw a perpendicular from this point, right, then this will be called as what you call as throat, throat of the weld. Why we are interested in throat of the weld? Because it has been found that minimum area of the weld is at the throat, right? Why we are interested in minimum area because citrus will be maximum at the minimum area how to determine the minimum area we have to find the throat of the weld right what is the throat of the weld throat of the weld is that if we consider uh, if we assume that this uh, weld 
flat weld is a right angle triangle triangle then the throat is obtained by drawing the perpendicular from the intersection of the legs on the hypotenuse okay so we will say d is throat thickness bd this is d throat thickness bd s we say is leg or size of weld right obviously is equal to thickness of the plate then l l is length of weld now what will be t in terms of s equal to shabash what will be t in terms of s equal to 1 by root 2 cos 1 by root 2 what 1 by root 2 once again T will be by root two, or you can say S into sine forty-five. Yes. Right. So that yes, is sir. equal to that is equal to zero point seven zero seven S. Okay. So uh, remember that T is always equal to zero point seven zero seven S. that is throat thickness is 0.7 uh, 0.707 times s right so we say we say minimum area of the weld minimum area of the weld weld or throat area or throat area A will be equal to throat thickness, throat thickness into length of weld. So we can say A is equal to T into L, or is equal to Zero point seven zero seven S into L, right? Now, if suppose sigma t is the sigma t is the allowable tensile stress for the weld metal, allowable tensile. stress for the weld metal right so what will be the p right that is load acting on the this will be equal to throat area throat area into allowable tensile stress That is P will be equal to throat area is zero point seven zero seven S L into L over ten raised to the minus T. Right. So this is a uh, tensile strength for single transverse flat weld. If suppose you have double transverse flat weld. That is, weld is at both edges. What will be P equal to? 
twice. Yes, very good. Two into seven zero seven S L into sigma t, right? Or this p will be equal to one point four one four S L into sigma t, right? If suppose you have flat weld at both is that is you have a double transverse flat weld if you have a single transverse flat weld it will be 0.707 sl sigma t but if you have a double transverse flat weld that is you have lap joint where in welding is at both edges right lower edge as well as upper edge then it will be twice 1.414 S L sigma T. Similarly, we have par parallel flat weld. Shear angles of par parallel flat weld joints are designed for shear shear angles. Okay, so A will be same. Let me tell you. Let me write this strength. The strength of parallel parallel flat welded joint. Now previously we transfer flat welded joint. Now we have parallel flat welded joint. The difference is only that transfer flat weld joint is used or is for this uh, uh, tensile strength, and these parallel flat weld joints are designed for shear strength. So A will be same. A will be same. Only difference is that P will be. If you have suppose uh, parallel flat weld, two into zero point seven zero seven S L. Now we won't write sigma uh, T. We will write tau. Okay. Now 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 let's write equation for this. Suppose we have suppose we have. Joint like this. Okay, we have joint like this. So what will be P equal? To? Shabash. This is called as compound weld, where we have single transverse flat weld and double parallel flat weld. What will be equation for this? Shabash. दोनों को ऐड कर देंगे 0.707 SL इनटू सिग्मा टी प्लस 1.414 SL SL बोलो 1.414 नहीं नहीं सुपर पुशन करेंगे तो सुपर पुशन पर चलेगा नहीं 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 मुझे बोलो ना व्हाट इल बी क्वेश्चन दैट वी विल राइट P इक्वल टू शाबाश यस P इक्वल टू दो One point four. One point four. L two L two plus L one. No. You are. How are you are wrong? Simple, I are. First we say zero point seven zero seven. Ah yes, zero point seven zero seven. Ah. Uh. 0.707 HL1 HL1 tau not tau 
This way you can find the strength of this welded joint. Now I have to tell you something. I have to tell you something that you will remember for ever. Uh, let's suppose you have to weld between these two points. Point number one and point number two. Between two points, So between these two points you have to weld okay now once you start welding between these points that is line a and line b you will not start welding from line a but you will start uh, welding from this line right and you will go up to not b but to this point right let's call them as c and d so what i am saying is that if you have to weld between a and b instead of starting from a you will start from c and instead of stopping at b you will go to D. What is this? He says that since welding has to take place under cold conditions, even if your temperature is 40 degree, 45 degree, those are cold conditions for welding, right? Because we need very high temperature for welding. So effective welding will take place from point A. That's why we have started from point C, right? And if you start uh, stop at point B, but weld will go up to point D, right? So effective welding from C to D is actually AB, right? Like, say if you if you design a problem, and you say that length of the weld has to be 100 mm. What will be the actual length of the weld? Actual length of the weld will be 100 plus 12.5. That is 112.5 mm. And you write that adding, once you calculate L equal to 100 mm, you will write adding 12.5 for starting and stopping of the weld run. Sir. Try to understand. Try to understand this. Let me give you an example. Sir. Mummy jo hai, just, just listen to me. Aapki mummy jo hai, usko 30 rotiya banani hai. Thik hai? जब आप काउंट करते हो लास्ट में तो उसने 32 रोटियां बनाई होती है क्यों पहली वाली जो है वो उस पे कुछ धुआं लग जाता है और जो लास्ट वाली है वो जल जाती है तो इफेक्टिव जो है उसमें जो रोटियां खाने के लायक है वो ओनली 30 है इन द सेम वे जैसे आपको 100 एमएम mm वेल्ड करना है यू हैव टू ऐड 12.5 for starting and stopping of the weld run. 
similarly if in a problem he says that total length of the weld is 100 mm what will be the effective length of the weld shabash 112.5 no it will be 8.5 <laughs> because you have to now reduce 12.5 he says that total length of the weld is 100 mm out of this effect is only 88.5 because 12.5 you have to reduce or 87.5 whatever because you have to reduce 12.5 mm that is ineffective because he has already added 12.5 if you calculate 100 mm you have to add at uh, 12.5 so that you say that it is 112.5 is total length of the weld yes if you have any question सर मतलब वो सर बुक्स पे लिखा है ना 15 एमएम सर ये मतलब वो नहीं 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 ये जरूरी नहीं दे यूज डिफरेंट डिफरेंट यूज डिफरेंट दिस दिस स्टैंडर्ड्स बट वी विल यूज 12.5 विल ऐड 12.5 और सबट्रैक्ट 12.5 ओके ओके सर ठीक है ये समझ आया यस सर यस सर सो नेक्स्ट टाइम वी विल सॉल्व सम प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन इट सो दैट इट इज clear to you and we will take some special cases of these welder joints okay so i'll stop here